Hey, what's up guys? Dave Aldrich here with a video editing tutorial. Uh, this is going to be how I sync multiple GoPro cameras from a single flight uh, for editing my videos. So uh, hopefully you find this informative. Okay, so here we are in Premiere. So um, I'm editing for my uh, the uh, Santa Cruz Flats Race video series where we have what we have is um, you know a bunch of sort of interviews and talking and stuff, and then we get to the, the flying footage later on. So um, there's uh, a, a few different ways to do this, and and there are actually built-in tools in Premiere and most non-linear editing software that will allow you to sync multiple cameras. Um, but I don't like to use them, at least the tool in Premiere. I find it kind of cumbersome and especially when working with um, these long duration files so it's kind of a special case that you know for these hang gliding flights we, we end up with um, you know an hour and a half or two hours worth of footage so we have all these individual files that all need to be you know kept track of and synced together so here's my my sprog and here's my base tube so I've got to sync all of these together uh, in order to be able to, to, to edit uh, the way I like to do. So um, here's a quick side tip uh, in Premiere in, in case you didn't know this. So these are all separate folders in the uh, project bin um, to help organize files and what you can do is you can actually dock them so if you if you click on the the little tab where the name is you can see I can just drag it down here and I can just dock these right next to my project. So here's my main project folder and then I can just pop over to um, the other folders that I'm currently working on. So, um, okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is come over here to, uh, just to one of the beginning here, one of them, I'll start with the, um, I'll start with the base tube and, and load it up in the source monitor. And so I'm gonna look for, um, you know, a, a sync point. Um, now there's, I'm gonna sync it manually. There are also tools to automate the syncing of, of files, um, but, since I'm not really going to be using the audio for these, it's not really necessary. So I just need to get it close enough. And so I'm going to just kind of try to find um, a shot here that looks like, um, you know, something that, uh, you know, that I can see in both cameras. And so right there is good. You can see where he drops the rope. If I kind of go frame by frame right there he's got it and there he doesn't have it so I'm pretty sure I can see that in the other camera so I'm gonna mark that as my endpoint and then drag the video down to my timeline so what I'm gonna end up doing is having the entire timeline filled with the entire flight down on, on my timeline which will look um, which will look pretty pretty awkward but when I start to work with it I think you'll see why I why I like doing it that way uh, okay, so that's the base tube camera. Next is the Sprog camera. So I come over here and uh, load it up. And now I'm going to look for that point where he drops the cable. And it looks like... Oh, this guy's standing in the way. So that's not going to work. So I need to find another spot. I can just come down here. And so another good spot for sure is where, where I leave the cart. Uh, that I'm pretty confident. Um, and kind of zoom in here and so right about the point to where I let go right about there I let go and I start to leave the cart so I'll just make that my my sync point by cutting to there and um, don't worry I can bring that stuff back so now I'll go back to my Sprog camera and just scroll through so I need to just find that leaving the cart moment Maybe like, probably right about there. So that'll be good enough. And um, so I marked it at the endpoint, and now I'm going to put it on layer two. And so if I zoom out, so now you can see I, I have both, and they're going to be you know close enough to syncing that um, that I'll be able to work with. And you can kind of just turn, you know. Uh, v2 you know video layer 2 on and off to you know kind of check it and just sort of see you know just make sure so I'm looking down to the left there and then yeah so make sure that looks you know looks right in the in both uh, both angles 
So now, um, now what I can do to get the rest of the video, all I have to do is drag and drop these onto my the entire videos on my on the uh, the entire clip on my timeline. Make sure you go in order here. These GoPro naming schemes can be a little bit awkward if you're not aware of this. So this was the first one, and this is the second one. So I've got the sprog on the second layer. So I'm just going to drag all of these out here. That one, this is the third one, actually the fourth. It's the fourth one, but it has the number three. That one and that one. Okay. So now I kind of got to, now what I've done is I've, you know, stitched the entire video basically back all the clips into one long video on my timeline. And of course, I'm not going to have this whole thing on my timeline. You know, it's an hour and 45 minutes right now, but this is the way that I like to work. So what I'm doing now is just scrolling past these. Uh, past the cuts right here to make sure it's continuous and I didn't make a mistake or miss a file or you know something didn't import you know so there shouldn't be a you know there shouldn't be a sudden jump here right so that looks good and whoops I'm pretty confident this is right you, you can also just look at the numbers so um, yeah now I'll go back to my base tube camera and I'll do the same thing now you can see these are there are different lengths here, the, the video length, and and that's because um, I'm pretty sure on my base tube camera I had um, I had a pro uh, I forget what they call ProTune. There it is, <laughs> ProTune enabled, which is a higher bitrate codec, so um, each individual file is larger, and then the base tube camera cuts off before the other camera because when I land. I can reach my base tube camera and turn that one off, but I still gotta, I still gotta get unhooked from the glider before I can turn the sprog camera off. So, um, you know, this might be wasted footage, but there also might be some good B-roll in here. So I tend to, uh, you know, save this this kind of stuff. Um, and then when I when I get back here, you know, see I parked the glider in the hangar, and there's like cool high five moments. So, uh, you know, so that's that's pretty cool to leave the camera running. Uh, yeah. Okay. So now, the, basically, the, they're they're synced, and um, so if I want the beginning of the, of the of the flight back, I can you know just drag these back out like this. And now, as long as I don't move these two files relative to each other, they're, the two cameras are synced. So now, how do I go about editing this? Um, first thing I'm going to do is remove the audio from the um, from the Sprog camera. I, I I didn't need to put it on there in the first place. So um, by default in this version of Premiere, they're, they're linked. So you need to right click and then say unlink. And now you can see I can select the video and the audio separate. And I'll just delete. So I'm not going to use that audio track. Um, I, if I'm going to use any audio track, it's going to be the camera on my base tube because that's the one I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, talking to if I'm narrating while flying. So that's there. Um, and now let's just bring in a, um, a song. This is not the song that I'm I'm gonna use. I, I just I used it in a, a previous video, but I'll just use it for you know for demonstration. Um, and so I'll drag that down and I'll put it on my audio layer two timeline here. And um, so now you know I, I you know if you want to you know cut to the cut to the music you can. Um, so. Um, yeah, this this song kind of has a long intro, so probably this this will the intro will kind of go over the, you know, in the background of the, um, you know, the dialogue these like interview parts, and then I'll kind of you know bring this fade this up and then you know start cutting when the flying action happens. So let's let's find the flying action, and so the song kind of gets going. Look, looks like right about here. Okay, so that's cool. So I'll just bring these two and drag them, kind of right around there. Right? See? And uh, for the purposes of this, I'm just going to mute the audio on that on that track for now. So we're just going by the by the um, by the music. Just bring the music down for now. So now what I can do the way, the way I like to to edit these is I just kind of it's kind of like I don't know sculpting a statue maybe it's you know here I here I've got a big slab of marble right and I'm just gonna remove everything that is you know not my video so um, so so 
So right there, you know, so you want to cut on the action. So that that's that's good action to cut on is, you know, when I start to leave the cart. So um, what I can do is just drag and remove the, whoops, whoops actually that's not what I wanted to do. So um, the keyboard shortcut C brings up the cut tool, the razor blade tool, and I can just cut them. And then V, C and V are right next to each other on the keyboard. V gets you back to the, the move around regular cursor. And so now I can just, you know, like drag this away. And there's my cut. And that sounds like a good place to cut right there. So I pause it, you know, to sync to the music. And um, so this is the way I like to work in Premiere. I like to kind of just sculpt at these, at, these, um, at these tracks, you know, to just cut them away. And then, you know, without having to leave the timeline, where normally, you know, you'd be pulling clips down from the source uh, monitor and then dropping them here. I, I like to just do all my work on the timeline. And so I'll scroll through and, you know, find my next shot. Maybe it's, you know, something where you can kind of, that, that's cool to cut to because you can kind of see the, you know, the hotel there. So I'll just cut those, you know, they'll snap to the, uh, to the time indicator. And I can ripple delete. And and so now I'm still pausing, I'm cutting on the cutting on the music there. So um, you know, for these arrow toe flights, I like to show a little bit of the toe and then you know kind of you know um, you don't need to see the whole thing. Um, so you can see I can just really quickly scroll through the whole big sections of the flight here. Um, and so that's, this is kind of a cool shot here flying over the, you know, uh, climbing up here over the, over the golf course. So let's cut to there. So again, that's kind of where I wanted to be. And so now all I got to do is just drag the trim, the edges like this and then ripple delete. And so now I'm getting, getting there. All right, so I'm just still just kind of cutting on the beat, and um, so I'm gonna go pull this. And now I like to get the okay, I like to get the release. So somewhere in here I should be releasing pretty soon. Um, you see that the the timeline keeps rescaling. Um, I'm constantly using keyboard shortcuts when I'm editing. Um, makes things a lot faster for me. So plus and minus on the keyboard, in case you didn't know, will zoom out and zoom in. Um, very handy to uh, to have. So let's find the release somewhere in there. Here it comes. And uh, no, let's see, he's still there, but I'm, there we go. So right, there it is. Okay, kind of hard to see against the, the background there. Uh, and the release, I'm going to change uh, angles. So all I'm going to do is just kind of cut away the sprog uh, angle. And so that's pretty close, but I actually want to bring in a little bit more more of it. There we go. So that's that's cool. Um, and then ripple delete. So then I can zoom in and you know just kind of play it back. Okay, so that is, um, that's pretty much it. Um, and then don't forget the other keyboard shortcut, Control S, always save your projects very all the time. Basically, you need to be constantly saving. Um, and um, so that's how I like to work on these things. I like to kind of just whittle it down, you know, cut away everything that I don't want um, since, you know, since I'm trying to make it, you know, a six, eight, 10, 15 minute video out of something that's, you know, an hour and a half long. Uh, this is the way I like to work on these. So, um, so this is what I'll do. I'll, I'll continue to just kind of go by and find all the highlights in the in in the flight, and um, and I can do it all right here within the timeline without having to jump back and forth between tools. And I have all the sources. I have all the files that I need, and they're all synced up. So, um, um, the one thing to remember about this process is that there you know, only only synced by the position on the timeline. They're not linked together at all. So it, you can screw it up. If, you know, I did something like this, for example, 
um, now these two video tracks are not synced um, relative to each other, right? Because I, I slid that forward. So you got to be kind of just be careful of that and be aware of that as you're editing, especially if you use the ripple delete tool, because it can kind of sometimes do weird things. So you're going to be doing a lot of dragging, uh, dragging and dropping and selecting a multiple files, you know, like that, um, which is the way I like to work. So that's why this works for me. And uh, hopefully it can work for you. Okay, guys, that's it. That's how um, I sync multiple GoPros from a long duration uh, flight or basically any long activity, any kind of, you know, flight or bike ride or something like that. You know, we'll work with this, this method. So uh, let me know what you think. Um, this is what works for me. Maybe you've got a better workflow. Maybe uh, I'm doing something really dumb and you can suggest something better. Uh, so let me know in the comments and uh, also let me know, you know, if there's something else you'd like to see. Uh, some other editing techniques that maybe I can, you know, help walk you through or make another tutorial for. So um, thanks a lot. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share and all that good stuff. And we'll see you next time.